All right, in today's video, we're gonna discuss patch panels in your home lab. Do you really need them? Probably. Would you like to have them? Most likely. We're gonna tell you why you really need them. All coming up. All right, the first switch I wanna show you is our 48 port USW Pro switch. It's our PoE switch, it's actually powered kind of an overkill for a lot of people because they don't have a lot of things that they power. But here at the radio station, I know this isn't really a home lab, but it's really, it is, it's the same thing that you would put in your home. It's just maybe an overkill of what you put in your house. I don't know. But uh, the, the powered part of it comes in real handy for us because we have phones, we have phones, <laughs> we have phones. And uh, you know we've got our APs, cameras, things like that. We've got things that are powered, microwaves to get a link from point to point. So we need the powered switch. It was uh, you know a little bit over the over the top as far as money goes, but when you need it, you need it. Also, there's a little bit of room for expansion in here as well. So we're not going to be running out of room anytime soon. But uh, we we are able to add some new things, and that's really nice. But for what you tuned in for on the patch panels, uh, this this is the way that I do all of our patch panels. In fact, even for uh, other customers or anything, I, this is what I will do when I do something like this because I just like cable management. I like things strapped down. I like things to look good, to look like it belongs, the way it's supposed to be. And this method right here just works so well. I like to use the keystone uh, in fact, this is a Cable Matters uh, 24 port uh, patch panel. I, I use two of those because on the Ubiquiti switches, they're on top of each other. So, you know, you, you need the top, you need the bottom, obviously. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the Cable Matters is they number their ports, which I understand you need to number them so you know where you are, but they never they never coincide with what what you're doing as far as, you know, the things that I do, because even if even if this was one, two, three, four, five, the switch isn't like that. The switch is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on down the line, up to forty-eight. So it 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 doesn't work. Does it bother me that much? No, not really. It doesn't. It's okay. So we're not even going to worry about that. But anyway, the keystones are, are fantastic. Everything terminates in the back goes to wherever it is, all the outlets and, and, and everything that we have out there. Works really, really well. I love the, the fishbone pattern that, uh, you, know, that you, you get when you do this type of thing. These are six inch jumpers, so it, it just makes it beautiful when you set something up like this. Now what I do is I'm using black here because this is the black switch. I name all my switches, like this one here is the um, the, the USW 48 port black in parentheses. The next switch that I have that may be in another building, uh, another place, it may be all, all green <laughs> or all yellow or all red. And I call it red or green, yellow, whatever the color is. And that, when I'm just looking at the interface, it just, it just, I could, I see it better, and, and I, I know where my, where my stuff is. So that's the reason I do that. This is called the black switch. That's why it's black. And you may say, well, why do you got a red jumper down here? Well, that's because, on, in, coming into this, this radio station, we have actually two uh, outside sources of internet. We have two links coming in. One is our general link. It runs everything, phones, APs, computers, everything. And that's most of the switch right here. But the other link is our audio link. And we send all of our audio feeds out of the studio out that way through uh, networks. And we need something that's dedicated because if you know anything about radio, uh, off the air is not good, so we <laughs> need something really reliable. And we need something that's not going to be somebody downloading something and cause a hiccup to where the audio hiccups can't have that. So anyway, there's two networks. Uh, the jumper right here, the reason I have this is because this is on a port that actually goes to a PC that I use for general use. When I need to go to that audio network, 
we don't have anything going to that network except this one piece right here. And in fact, I can undo it. And when I need to go to that audio network, when I need to go to that modem uh, from that PC, I just come in here and switch it because these are my two networks right here, right here for that PC. So now I'm on the audio network on that PC. And if I unclick it, put it back over here. Now I'm on this network for that PC back to normal. But it's very rare that I go to that network to have to do anything. So it's not that big a deal. I know some of you would say, well, there's better ways of doing that. And you know what? There probably is. But when I don't use it that often, it's, it works fine. In fact, that brings me to something that, you know, it's kind of a pet peeve. I don't know. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of bothersome, I guess, when I see comments that people will make about the way somebody does something. And I'm, I'm one of those that, you know, maybe there is a better way of doing this or that or whatever you're doing. But if it works for you, then why change it? Really? If it really works for you and it makes you happy, then by all means, keep doing it the way you're doing it. Don't worry about what people are thinking. If they want to do it that way, great. Let them do it that way. But if you don't want to do it that way, don't do it that way. So anyway, this is my little way of uh, solving that issue. And it works fine with me. So anyway, this down here is, is one of those little brush <laughs> uh, 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 blank that you, you stick cables through and it's, it's, it's so it can hide cables. It doesn't do that great of a job. I've had this forever. And if I need to pop a cable from the back and just come in the front for a test or something that I'm doing, that's the reason I, 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 I have this actually in here. I don't like to use it for a pass through of a bunch of cables because they tend to want to bunch up and it looks ugly. So I never want to do anything like that. That's just a pass through so I can bring a cable and it, it works. It works fine for that. Now, um, I showed you this one. I'd like to show you the one out at our broadcast tower site. And the reason for that is because it's not a ubiquity switch. It's a, uh, a TP link, I think out there. It's, it's like a 16 port switch. It's, it kind of comes like here. And, you know, we were talking about jumpers going from here to one, here to two, if you're going to use a, a patch panel like this. And, and you got long cables coming here because it starts over here, but one's over here and you got long cables. So as you get closer, you might be getting shorter cables, but it doesn't look that good. So we're talking organization with your patch panel. And I'm going to show you out there how we did it. And I think you're going to be amazed. All right, this is a perfect time to ask you to like and subscribe. Uh, follow our channel. You can hit that bell notification up at the top and it'll let you know when the next video comes out. All right, we're at the tower site, and before I get started, I just want to apologize real quick for the noise level, because there's fans, air conditioning, equipment, everything runs 24-7, and it's, it's pretty noisy in here, but you kind of expect that, right? It's a data room. It's supposed to be. Anyway, here's the switch we're talking about. It's the uh, TP-Link. It's the 16-port gigabit switch, and it works perfect out here. We you might be thinking, well, really, why don't you have a Ubiquity out here? It's because we only have six things plugged into it. It's just not enough for me to warrant buying one for out here when all we need it for is just to log into a piece of equipment, maybe do a, a firmware update or something like that, something simple, maybe reboot something. So we just don't need a dedicated switch right now for this location. So this TP link, we had it, it works fine. We get to our tower site from the studio at the radio station, back at the radio station. We get here on a cradle point. We 
also have a microwave link as well that's used as a backup source for us. So we actually have two, two links coming in. The cradle point is the one that's used 99.99999% of the time. I always wondered why uh, first responders used it in all their vehicles. Now I know, it just, it just works. But uh, we're on a VPN that actually comes out here to give us our network capabilities at the studio as well, so we have it in the same place. Anyway, let's get back to the switcher. This is what you tuned in for. The TP-Link uh, 16 port, as you can see, it's, it's, it's just right here. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't fill the whole 19 inch rack space here. So what do you do? You, you shorten it. <laughs> they still number it, I don't like that, but that's okay, we're not gonna talk about that again. But I use blanks the actual keystone blanks to fill in what I'm not going to use and then just concentrate on the center part right here where the TP link is and that allows everything to come right out of the TP link out of the switch into the patch panel out of the uh, the switch into the patch panel again so everything in here is nothing over here nothing it makes it look really nice like that still got that little fishbone pattern with the uh, the, the jumpers here works great. But again, if you didn't have this, if you had the TP link, if you had this whole setup here and you started at one to one, see you got a jumper that's gonna go all the way here to here, two's gonna go here, and you're gonna wind up going with what? To port eight? All of these ports are gonna plug in here and you're just gonna have a big mess coming over here and then a big mess here going here. And it might look okay if you made your own jumpers. These are all pre-cut purchase the way you see them right there just makes it simple now if I had the time you know if I wanted to take the time I, I could do that but I still like the looks of this I like it to come out of the switch into the patch panel and forget about all of this that's why they make the blanks if you don't use the keystones you just put the blank in place you're good now over here I got a uh, connection here this is this is for my laptop test equipment, uh, you know, if, if I'm working on a piece of equipment and I need to get to the data side of it, I can plug it into our network. So this is just basically kind of like a, a test uh, connection for me. It just loops through from the back of the keystone. I have a loop through that comes, and I believe it plugs into this one here, it just loops around. And so I'll, I'll have a, always have a port here for, for maintenance or anything that I need. Not sure if you could use that at home in your home lab, but you might. You know, you can always just plug in your laptop right there, work on something. It's cool just to have it. But anyway, this is this just makes it so much neater. I see a lot of places, tower sites, just like this one here, where <laughs> GABA cables just coming in and you know plugged in like that, and are coming from overhead and just <laughs> just cables just strung across the racks and. You know, I've, I've, I've seen it all. I don't like that. I like things to be nice and neat and orderly. And this right here gives us that. It's hot out here. It's 105. Woo.